Welcome to the last review of this series. Welcome to the end of an era. Welcome to Christopher Eccleston's last episode. Welcome to a real tearjerker. That's right, everybody. Uh, today, it's the last review of the first series of the rebooted series entitled The Parting of the Ways. My name is Michael Nowak. Welcome to Doctor Who is My Life. And, uh, and let's get to it. Let's review the last episode of the series. Now, as is tradition on the Doctor Who's My Life channel, we will start the review with a short recap. Continuing from the last episode, Rose is trapped on the Dalek space fleet, and the Doctor is approaching in the TARDIS together with Captain Jack. Jack manages to create a fully functioning force field around the TARDIS, and therefore the TARDIS materializes around Rose. A Dalek makes it into the TARDIS as well, and is blasted into atoms by Jack's handcrafted gun. After the rescue, the Doctor steps out of the TARDIS in order to speak to the Dalek Emperor. We find out that the Dalek Emperor survived the Time War and has been building a new race of Daleks using deceased human beings that lost the games on Satellite 5. This has created a new race of part-human Daleks that are more deadly than ever. The gang returns to Satellite 5. The Doctor realizes that he can build a Delta Wave, otherwise known as a wave of Van Cassidyne energy that will destroy any living thing using the satellite as a transmitter. As the Doctor gets to building the Delta Wave, the Dalek ships approach the satellite. Rose stays on floor 500 while Jack, Linda with a Y, and the rest of the employees of the game station armor up and get ready to fight against the Daleks. Meanwhile, at floor zero, about 100 people are stuck. These people are various contestants from the reality TV show games. Jack goes down to warn them that the Daleks are arriving and to recruit help from any volunteers. Upstairs at floor 500, the doctor tricks Rose to get her into the TARDIS by telling her that he can save everyone by using the TARDIS to fly into his own timeline. Instead, he runs out and locks the doors behind him and sends Rose home, thereby activating Emergency Protocol 1, built to get the TARDIS away from enemies that could use its power for their own benefit. Rose lands back in London in 2005, where Mickey shows up to comfort her. Rose is heartbroken over having been flown home. Jackie comes along and they go to a diner, where Rose gets so emotionally distraught that she runs out of the cafe in tears. Meanwhile, in the year 200,100, the doctor realizes that he must make a choice. The Delta Wave could potentially work, but would kill every living thing in existence, including everyone on planet Earth, as well as the Daleks. Meanwhile, Jack, Linda with a Y, and the rest of the gang are ready to go to war with the Daleks. The Daleks arrive at the game station at floor 494, but instead of going up to get to the Doctor, they instead head down to floor zero and kill all the humans that are trapped down there. Afterwards, they make their way up to floor 500 by killing everyone who gets in their way, including Jack, Linda with a Y, and the rest of the employees of Satellite 5. They enter floor 500 right as the Doctor has finished building the Delta Wave. The Doctor establishes contact with the Dalek Emperor and threatens to press the handle and destroy every living thing in existence. But at the last second, he forfeits, admitting to defeat by the Daleks. The Doctor is incapable of killing everyone. While all this is going on back in London in 2005, Rose discovers the words Bad Wolf written in plain sight. She realizes it's a signal a link between the years 200,100 and 2005. She comes up with a plan. If she can get the TARDIS to rip open, she can establish contact with the heart of the TARDIS and force it to make a return trip. Using a towing truck, Mickey manages to rip open the TARDIS and Rose looks inside. The TARDIS doors close and it materializes. Rose lands the TARDIS in the year 200,100 and she steps out. She now has the entire time vortex running through her head and has become invincible. Because of this newfound power, she is able to create herself. She takes the words Bad Wolf and scatters them across time and space as a hint to lead herself back to save the Doctor. She then uses her power to destroy every single Dalek ship, causing the extinction of the entire race of Daleks. She then brings Captain Jack back to life before the Doctor kisses her and therefore absorbs all the energy of the Time Vortex. Rose passes out and the Doctor carries her into the TARDIS. The Doctor is dying because of all the energy of the Time Vortex and so the episode ends with the Ninth Doctor regenerating into the Tenth Doctor as a way of cheating death. Wow, what an episode. What an emotional way to end uh, this series. Uh, now let's get into my review of this episode. My favorite scene is actually the one where the Ninth Doctor has this amazing and great and angry monologue at the Dalek space fleet where he uh, speaks against the Dalek Emperor and against the Daleks and yells at them. That scene gives me goosebumps. It's, uh, it's so great. I think you're forgetting something. I'm the Doctor, and if there's one thing I can do, it's talk. I've got five billion languages and you haven't got one way of stopping me. So if anybody's going to shut up, it's you! 
Now, my least favorite scene, although it's hard to find one, is the one where the doctor absorbs all the energy of the time vortex. I just don't understand why it would kill him when it didn't kill Rose. Surely she was the one who absorbed all the energy to begin with through looking into the time vortex, into the heart of the TARDIS, which would essentially uh, fry up anyone who would try to do so. And she just gets away with it unscathed. But the doctor dies from kissing her and absorbing it. It doesn't make any sense. Come here. He's killing me. I think you need a doctor. Now let's talk a little bit about Christopher Eccleston. I've been debating with myself uh, who was my favorite doctor. And I think I have to go with Christopher Eccleston, the ninth doctor. Through the past 13 episodes, we have seen him excel again and again and get more and more emotional and more and more real and authentic. And it's just overwhelming. Eccleston is such a brilliant actor. He will always undoubtedly be my doctor. When I was introduced to Doctor Who back in 2012, I was introduced to the show through Christopher Eccleston. For me, he will always be the most underrated doctor. Imagine what Christopher Eccleston could have done with three or four series if he would have been able to stay. He left at the height of his game, and I have so much respect for that. I just want to tell you, you were fantastic. Do you know what? So was I. Have a good life. Do that for me, Rose. Have a fantastic life. Now let's talk a little bit about Captain Jack Harkness, John Barrowman. It's so sad that he leaves the TARDIS in this episode. I know it's time for a change and the Doctor regenerates and all that stuff and Rose brings Jack back to life and whatever, but I think he should have continued in the TARDIS, continued to be a companion. He's great. He's amazing, dude. John Barrowman is an excellent performer and actor and he has my deepest respect. I also want to talk about how emotional and powerful of a voice performance that Nicholas Briggs gives in this episode as the Dalek Emperor. Nicholas Briggs is often overlooked, but he's the voice of the Daleks and has been for the entirety of the new series. I think his best performance is in this episode as the Dalek Emperor. I reached into the dirt and made new life. I am the god of all Daleks. I also want to talk about my ever-growing love for Jackie, Camille Kaduri. The scene in this episode where she stands on the TARDIS with Rose and they talk about Rose's father, Peter Allen Tyler, that we saw in the eighth episode. It's just a really emotional scene. Uh, Jackie gets teary. Uh, she runs out of the TARDIS. She comes back with a towing truck and essentially saves the universe. How can you not love Jackie Tyler. How can you not think that she's one of the best fucking characters that this show has ever had? That was me. You saw me. Stop it. That's how good the dog. Stop it. Just stop it. Now it's time for the rating of this episode. For obvious reasons, I'm going to give it five out of five TARDISes. There is not a single thing about this episode that I don't like. And there will not come a time where I can't sit down and watch this two-parter ending episode again and again and again. Aside from the end of time, I think this is the greatest two-part finale that has ever been of the show. And I've watched the classical series as well. <laughs> I'm just, I'm blown away and I'm fucking speechless. It's such a great episode and it's such a great two-parter and yeah that's it man i don't have much more to say other than thank you so much for watching this thank you so much for joining me in revisiting and reviewing all the episodes of this series it means the world to me thank you thank you thank you and be sure to go and uh, re-watch all these amazing episodes and let me know in the comments what you thought of them i'm gonna get going be sure to go check out my main channel where i more consistently upload videos thank you for watching i hope to see you again someday be sure to subscribe if you want to if you're new here hit the bell if you like these videos and then you'll be notified of whenever i upload i'll see you guys sometime in the near future all right bye